Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. Today I will be showing you the top items that were added in ArcGIS Pro 3.5. This release focuses on productivity, performance, and quality. Notable improvements include the addition of a Memory Workspace button on geoprocessing tools, allowing users to set the output parameter path to the temporary Memory Workspace, the introduction of dual scale bars on layouts, and enhanced support for working with Apache Parquet files and NoSQL databases like Elasticsearch and OpenSearch. You can construct a spatial definition query by adding a spatial clause. Spatial clauses use layer geometry or spatial extents rather than attribute values to filter the layer. This recent Earthquakes point feature layer covers the entire globe, but I'm only interested in earthquakes whose epicenters lie on the Caribbean plate. Open the layer properties, go to the Definition Query tab, and create a new definition query. Click Add Spatial Clause. Choose any layer's geometry, selected features, or custom extent to use, and click OK. After applying the change, only the earthquake features that intersect this geometry are drawn on the map. Pane sets allow you to save custom configurations of visible panes and reopen them at a later time. If you frequently use the Attributes pane, you can create a pane set for working with attributes. Start by opening the Attributes pane. On the View tab, click Pane Sets. There are default pane sets already for editing, geoprocessing, and mapping. To make a new pane set, click New and give the pane set a name. Now, whenever you need to use the Attributes pane, you can select your pane set and the Attributes pane will appear. Let's say your workflow changes and after completing attribute validation, you'll want to export the features using a Python script. Start by opening the Python pane, click Pane Sets, and select Edit. You can rename, remove, or update a pane set at any time. Click Update for the new pane set to include the Python pane. The pane set updates to include the Python pane in addition to the attributes pane from before. Vertices and nodes is a new way to quickly overlay vertices, nodes, pseudonodes, dangles, and curved segments in ArcGIS Pro. This helps detect possible data quality issues while editing. Using the overlay drawing, you can see the underlying geometry and spatial relationships of the layers in your maps. As you create a line, dangles appear at the line's endpoints. A dangle is a line endpoint that is not connected to another line endpoint or to the edge of a polygon. You can create pseudo nodes by creating a line that snaps to the endpoint of another line. Finally, you can create nodes by creating a line that snaps to two or more other line endpoints. You can also create lines that contain vertices. Open the Vertices and Nodes Settings page to control the symbols, colors, and participating layers. A new Utility Network Migration Wizard has been added in ArcGIS Pro 3.5. This new wizard can be launched by right-clicking any geometric network and selecting the To Utility Network command. Use the Domain Networks page to define the domain network you want to create by either importing them from a geometric network or defining your own. The Geodatabase Options page lets you specify the output location and name of the new utility network and geodatabase. Use the Utility Network Mapping page to control how your source data is migrated to the new utility network. Finally, the Standalone Class Mapping page lets you add any additional tables or feature classes to the new geodatabase. Click Finish to migrate your data. This will run the new Migrate to Utility Network geoprocessing tool to migrate your data. Once the tool finishes, you can use the layer file created by the tool to begin exploring the newly created utility network. Enhancements have been made to the Histogram tab in the Symbology pane to provide additional capabilities for class-based symbology. For example, you can now change the zoom level to better see and adjust the positions of class breaks, view the feature count in each bin by hovering over them, and edit the number of histogram bins that are displayed. Updates have also been made to improve accessibility and legibility. Many improvements were made to the Calculate Field tool in ArcGIS Pro 3.5.
The tool supports expressions written in four languages and provides a list of helper functions to insert expression code with the click of a button. The new convert spatial units Python function allows you to convert length or area values in a field from one unit to another. For example, this function converts these street lengths from feet to meters. The tool's performance is improved when using simple values like numbers or strings, or when calculating an expression equal to a single field. This calculation that took a minute to run in ArcGIS Pro 3.4 now completes in less than 30 seconds. Setting the expression type to SQL also improves performance. Input datasets in file and mobile geo databases now support SQL calculations, so the same calculations made using SQL will complete in less time. Lastly, each time you run the tool, the expression value and code block are stored in a new recent list of the 10 most recent valid expressions used in the tool. ArcGIS Pro 3.5 introduces a new metadata editor. The application defaults to the classic metadata editor. Let's add a summary and description to demonstrate how these values persist after switching to the new metadata editor. To launch the new metadata editor, go to the Project tab, open the Options dialog box, and click the Metadata tab. From the dropdown, choose the ArcGIS Metadata Editor and click OK. The summary and description we added before are visible here. Both metadata editors in ArcGIS Pro support creating and updating metadata, which allows you to switch between them seamlessly. The same metadata editor is now available across the ArcGIS system in ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise, and ArcGIS Pro. In addition to productivity, performance, and quality improvements, there are also many new features available in ArcGIS Pro 3.5 including portal projects, a Kogo reader for parcel fabric, and new geoprocessing tools. You can now store an ArcGIS Pro project in an ArcGIS Enterprise 11.4 or 11.5 portal and share it with others in your organization. You can open a portal project from any device with access to the portal, for example if you have a separate computer for working from home compared to in-office. Use the Info tab to see when the last change was made or to see the full save history for the project. Click Get Updates to retrieve the most recent updates from the portal. Open new items you received from the catalog pane. Portal projects enable a small team to work more effectively by allowing multiple people to update different maps and layouts in the same project at the same time. You can provide read-only access to everyone by sharing the project to your organization and write access to a small set of users who are members of a shared update group. People with read-only access can edit web feature layers but cannot alter layer symbology or delete maps. Here is a deed describing a parcel with over 30 courses containing both straight lines and curves. Entering these courses manually can take a while. That's why we are excited to introduce the new Kogo Reader for Parcel Fabrics. Let's open the tool and load the deed we were just looking at. The tool presents the scanned image of the deed on the left. It will extract all the text into an editable center section and then find the courses and plot them on the right. After setting the starting point, we can see how the parcel fits within our parcel fabric. As I click on the different courses in the grid, both the extracted text and scanned image highlight exactly where the course is located. This makes it easy for me to compare what was scanned to what was extracted. Next, I'll add these features to the map and create my parcel polygon geometry. Hours of work can now be accomplished within seconds using the new Kogo Reader tool. Predicting whether an event, like a bridge failure, will occur or not comes with challenges, but predicting when a bridge might fall can be even trickier. The new Estimate Time to Event tool is a prediction tool in the Spatial Statistics Toolbox that uses data to predict when in the future an event may occur. For example, the National Bridge Inventory has information on a bridge's age, its quality level ranging from critical to great, and additional information like length, daily traffic, and material. The Estimate Time to Event tool can take this information and provide the amount of time until they may reach critical condition. Here you can see the output of the tool showing the estimated time to critical condition for the bridges in the dataset. This tool can be used to help solve a wide array of problems, from infrastructure failure to customer retention. 
Those were the top items for ArcGIS Pro 3.5. For a full list of everything new in this release, please read the What's New documentation for ArcGIS Pro.